I was always fascinated by biology. I was good at it too. My favorite part used to be the practicals once in a week. I used to look forward to putting all that theoretical knowledge into use in the lab. When I first learned about the microscope, this scientific marvel that, that lets me see tiny things that I can't see with my eye, I was thrilled. The first practical using a microscope was, was my most looked forward to. However, over time, the excitement faded away. Why? Because these sessions never turned out the way I wanted them to, or I expected them to. It usually involved the teacher setting up the sample on one microscope and students standing in line to just see it. Now, the first few students in the line may have seen the sample, but everyone else just struggled to see anything of significance and usually ended up assuming that that round blob, which was probably a dust particle, was the pollen grain that they were supposed to see. Now, technology has crept into the education sector in the form of smart boards and online classes, but barely anything has changed in the context of microscopes. It's been almost a decade since I was in school, but the microscopy setup being used is still the same. Now, just imagine, how many more students would have been fascinated by the microbial world? How many more doctors and microbiologists we would have had in our midst here right now if microscopy were as easy as this? If we could sit in our seats and watch paramecium swimming around while the teacher explained its anatomy to us. This is a pond water sample and you can clearly see the paramecium that are moving around. You can see the internal structures or like this where we could in detail see the internal structure of roundworms. So this is the parasite that lives in an animal intestine. See how clearly you can see the anatomy. Remember how we used to draw, try and draw this? It could never be the same. Now, microscopes are not just for education. They're an integral part of disease diagnosis as well. They used to look at the shape of your blood cells and count them when you go for that blood test or to see what kind of fungus is causing that skin infection. And in so many other ways, it's the gold standard for disease diagnosis. But for something that's so critical in healthcare, it has barely evolved over time. My team and I have seen firsthand the subjectivities and inefficiencies that result due to the very nature of microscopes being used today. So we decided to develop a product that would bring microscopy up to date with the technological advancements happening all around us introduction of mobile networks, internet facilities, smartphones, even in the most rural areas has made the world a smaller place. So we thought, why not integrate smartphones and their unlimited features with microscopy, making it digital and more accessible. Now, Silica is the world's first smartphone integrated microscope that can be used for diagnostic use. It has all the features that are available in normal microscopes with the added advantage of digitization and connectivity that is brought on by the smartphone. At this point, I'll invite my colleague Samra to come and give a small demo so that I can show you how it works. So for all of you who actually missed out on that pollen grain exercise in the lab, we'll, give you, we'll show you how pollen grains actually look like. So pollen grains are those powdery things that are found in flowers. They are carried from one flower to another by insects or birds. Uh, so we'll look at their structure here. So you can see a clump of pollen grains over here from a flower that we took you know, from the roadside. Look at the structure. You can actually see the spiny structure around the pollen grain that actually protects it while it's transferred from one flower to another. Have you seen that in school? <laughs> this is not limited. So what else can this product do? I mean, its applications are not limited to hospitals and classrooms. So we wanted to address the shortcomings in disease diagnosis that exist today. After a lot of research, we concluded that the major problem exists in remote rural areas from where you know, samples need to be collected for diagnosis. Now, since these places don't have the equipment or the facilities to con conduct the diagnosis there, the samples are taken to laboratories in more developed areas, often resulting in a delay of up to a week. Now, this one week delay can be very critical when we're talking about a disease like malaria. It can lead to very severe complications and even loss of lives if that malaria is not treated quickly. There have also been instances where, uh, you know, the sample has degraded during that transportation and leading to a misdiagnosis. So because of lack of appropriate technology, there was no solution for this problem until now. 
but this is where portable microscopy can come in handy. The compact structure enables it to be taken out into the field for point of care testing. It can eliminate time delays, it can eliminate sample loss, it can lead to faster and more effective treatment, reducing complications, reducing loss of lives. Besides, it's so easy to operate that you can train doctors in rural areas to use it as well. Now, not just this, with the rise of artificial intelligence and image processing, it is possible to equip this microscope to perform basic tests automatically. It can be used to assist pathologists. It can be used to relieve them of very mundane tasks, such as counting thousands of cells. So these are red blood cells that you're looking at, which is normally a process that's done when you go for a blood test. And the pathologists count these thousands of cells, many fields like this, using a manual counter like that. Whereas with this, it can be done with just one click. Now that we've seen how uh, this technology can be used in diagnosing diseases. We want to take it one step further. We want to use it to prevent diseases as well. How? There are still plenty of people across the world who do not even know about the existence of microorganisms. Health education is important in order to eradicate infectious diseases such as malaria and tuberculosis. It's important that there is awareness about microbes. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it isn't there. It might be just waiting for the right time to show itself. Similarly, just because you don't have the symptoms of a disease doesn't mean you're not capable of spreading it. Hence, it is important that everyone takes precautionary measures against fatal infections like malaria. Did you know there are over 1 million deaths due to malaria across the world every year? And over 1 billion people need to be tested. But how do you explain to an entire village that the large number of deaths amongst their people every year during the monsoons is because of the annoying yet tiny mosquitoes that are all around them? This can only be done by helping them visualize these carriers of death. So that is the mosquito head that you're looking at. And you can see the hairy antennas. The long white thing is the tube or the proboscis that it uses to suck your blood. And yes, you can see the compound eyes that are, you know, a characteristic of insects in general. Now, I'll also show you what changes happen in the blood cells once a malaria infection takes place. You can see uh, the circular things are the red blood cells. Most of them are normal. They're circular. But you can see some of them have purple bits inside them. So those purple bits are the malarial parasite. They have formed a nice cozy home inside your blood cells and causing your fever and sweats. So this is how malaria is diagnosed. So this, these purple spots and rings indicate that that's a malaria positive sample. That's a blood smear. These are not uh, just vague ambitions or you know wild dreams that they are telling you about. We have taken the first step into actually making it a reality. So we've already initiated the process of implementing this technology in uh, malaria ridden villages of Orissa. Orissa has the largest burden of malaria in India. We believe that with this technology, it can lead to a faster diagnosis, better treatment, and a loss of fewer lives. And with advanced telepathology networks, it is even possible to bring the expertise of thousands of pathologists across the world to even the remotest of villages in Orissa. In the tribal villages of Gachiroli in Maharashtra, this instrument was used to demonstrate the cause of sickle cell anemia. Using a projector, the difference between the blood cells of normal individuals and sickle cell anemia patients were explained. Now, what happens in sickle cell anemia? Due to some changes in the structure of hemoglobin, if you are an anemia patient, your red blood cells, when it doesn't get enough oxygen, they change shape. So from a circular structure, they go on into a crescent-shaped structure, and then they're not able to carry oxygen anymore. So. We have made a time-lapse video of this process for you using our microscope. So you can actually see the red blood cells as, they, as they're deprived of oxygen, they're changing their shape and becoming you know, useless forms of themselves. Now the thing about sickle cell anemia is you can be a carrier of the disease and yet lead a normal life. But it is still possible to carry on this, pass over this disease to your children if you marry another carrier. Hence, it is very important that everyone is aware about these diseases. It is important to raise awareness and convert each and every individual into an active member of this process. This is where we believe silica can create a significant impact in changing lives of generations to come. I would like to leave you with a picture of the future that we believe silica can create. A world 
where smart microscopes are the basic foundation of medical diagnosis. A world where smart microscopes are like glucose monitors, with one in each house, so that every individual can get themselves checked for infections and blood disorders on a regular basis.